Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here going over second order homogeneous linear equations with constant coefficients. We're looking at cases where the characteristic polynomial, the solution to that, gives us repeated real roots. So we start with some second order equation, ay double prime plus by prime plus cy equals zero, where a, b, and c are all constants. We analyze this second order equation by looking at its characteristic polynomial, this am squared plus bm plus c equals zero. This is just a quadratic equation that we can solve using algebra. And the idea for getting repeated real roots, in other words, we solve this quadratic equation and we get some sort of value for m that has multiplicity 2. What we mean by multiplicity 2 is the idea if you were to, let's say, be able to factor this quadratic equation and solve using factoring, you would get the same factor twice. And so in something like an algebra or a pre-calculus class, we would have said that this root has multiplicity 2 for the graph of this polynomial. Obviously when we solve this, we're only going to get one unique solution, and that solution or that root is going to have multiplicity 2. So the methods we're talking about in this video are specifically for when your characteristic polynomial gives you a root of multiplicity 2. So let's say we just ended up with m equals 3, and we know that we need to have a fundamental solution set with two functions of x. So maybe we guess that y equals c1e to the 3x plus c2e to the 3x, since we only got m equals 3. The problem with this is that e to the 3x and e to the 3x cannot possibly be a fundamental solution set. Remember, a fundamental solution set needs to be linearly independent, and these are certainly constant multiples of one another. So this can't be our solution. So we need another method when we get repeated real roots for our characteristic polynomial. So looking at the difference in what we get with a repeated real root, if m1 is a root of multiplicity 2, so it's a repeated root, for our characteristic polynomial, am squared plus bm plus c equals zero, then what we expect to be a solution, e to the m1x is going to be a solution, but also x times e to the m1x, so x times this other solution, that's going to be our other solution that makes up the fundamental set of solutions for the differential equation. You'll notice when we have repeated real roots to get this second function that is part of the fundamental set of solutions, we're actually going to multiply the first solution by x. So that will make our general solution then y equals some constant times e to the m1x plus some constant times x e to the m1x. These will be linearly independent. We're going to go ahead and work a few examples here with you, and then at the end of the video, we'll actually show you how x e to the m1 x is also a solution for this equation as well. Looking at our first example here, we have y double prime plus 2y prime plus y equal to 0. If you look in this equation, you can see that a is 1, and b is 2, and c is also 1, so these are all constants. Our characteristic polynomial for this equation then is going to be 1m squared plus 2m plus 1, and that equal to 0 if we solve this. This actually factors nicely. It factors into the same thing twice. We get m plus 1 times m plus 1. So another way to say m plus 1 times m plus 1 is to say quantity m plus 1 all squared, so you can see that the solution we get from setting this factor equal to zero is going to have multiplicity two, since the factor appears that many times. So if we set m plus one equal to zero, then of course we're going to get m is equal to negative one. Since this is a repeated real root, then our solution will be y equals some constant c times e to the negative one x, or just negative x, plus c2. Remember we multiply our other solution by x, so we'll get c2x e to the negative x. Looking at our next example here, we have y double prime minus 10y prime plus 25y equals 0. So here a is 1, and b is negative 10, c is 25. So our characteristic polynomial will be 1m squared minus 10m plus 25. If we factor this, we'll actually get m minus 5 times itself, m minus 5. Another way to say this is, of course, again, m minus 5 all squared equal to 0. So when we set m minus 5 equal to 0, we'll get m equal to 5. This has multiplicity 2. 
because the factor appears twice. So we know we have a repeated real root. We'll go ahead and say that y equals c1 e to the whatever m was, so 5x here, plus, now we multiply the other one by x, so c2x e to the 5x. Looking at our last one here, 9y double prime plus 6y prime plus y equal to 0. So here a is 9 and b is 6, c is 1. So we will get 9m squared plus 6m plus 1 is equal to 0. If we factor this, we'll actually get 3m plus 1 times 3m plus 1. We could also say 3m plus 1 all squared. And if we set 3m plus 1 equal to 0 to get our repeated real root, we'll subtract 1, divide by 3, we'll get that m is equal to negative 1 third with multiplicity 2. And so our answer is going to be y equals c1 e to the negative 1 third x or negative x over 3 plus some constant c2 times x e to the negative x over 3. And lastly, we're just going to show you why x e to the m1x is a solution if e to the m1x is a solution and m1 is a root of multiplicity 2 for this characteristic polynomial here. Now we already know from our previous video that e to the m1x is going to be a solution, so we don't need to worry about that. Now if x e to the m1x is a solution, I should be able to plug it in and get a true statement, right? So I could plug that in for the y here. I would also need y prime and y double prime though. So let's go ahead and find y prime. Remember this will be a product rule if we do the derivative. So the derivative of x is 1, so we'll just get e to the m1x. Plus, if we take the derivative of this now, we would get m1 times x e to the m1x. And that's our first derivative. Our second derivative, we would have the derivative of this first term, which is not a product rule here, so we just get m1 e to the m1x plus, now this one is a product rule, so if we do the derivative of m1x, that would just be m1 e to the m1x plus, if we do our other half of the product rule here, we'll be doing the derivative of the exponential. Another m1 is going to come out, so we'll actually get m1 squared x e to the m1x. We'll then have y prime and y double prime. We can take all this information and plug it in. So we would get a times, I'm going to go ahead and combine these, and I'll call that 2m1. So we'll say 2m1 e to the m1x plus m1 squared x e to the m1x. So that's our first term, a y double prime, plus b y prime, so plus b times what we got here, which is e to the m1x plus m1x e to the m1x plus c, and then times our original y here, which is x e to the m1x. And that's supposed to equal 0. Okay, let's go ahead and gather all of the terms that have times x in them. So this one, and this one, and this one. Notice we're going to get multiply out front, right? So x e to the m1x, we would have times a m1 squared from the first one. Here we would have plus b times m1 from the second one there. And the last one we would have plus c. So that takes care of those. Let's go ahead and get these last two terms that we don't have. Plus, now these have at least e to the m1x, so I'll factor that out. So e to the m1x times, here we would have 2am1, and then this one we would just have plus b. And all of that is equal to zero. So now let's look at these two statements and see what we really have. Over here, x e to the m1x times the stuff in the brackets here. Everything in the brackets here, if you'll notice, looks just like our characteristic polynomial. And we said that m1 was a root for this polynomial. In other words, plugging in m1 makes this polynomial 0. So I know that everything in the brackets here 
is zero since that is just our characteristic polynomial with m1 plugged in. So this first part is all zero. What we have to figure out, I guess, is this second piece. So we have e to the m1x times the quantity 2am1 plus b. Now e to the m1x is an exponential and it can't ever be zero. So the trick is really in seeing how is this 2am1 plus b, how is this equal to zero? And we're going to take you back to the quadratic formula. So if I'm solving this for m, remember that m is going to equal negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of that over 2a. And if we have a repeated real root, in other words, we only have one solution for this equation up here, then that means everything after the plus minus up here, what we call the discriminant, for this equation must actually be zero. Otherwise we would get two different solutions because we have plus minus here. So this part we know because we get a repeated real root is zero. So that's going to leave our statement saying m is equal to negative b over 2a. Now remember what we were trying to figure out. How do we know that this 2a m1 plus b is equal to zero? Because that would make this true. Well if this is equal to zero, let's think about that. Set that equal to zero. 2a m1 plus b is equal to zero. Now solve this for m1, right? So go ahead and subtract b, divide by 2a, you'll get that m1 is equal to negative b over 2a, and we know that's the case because we got a repeated real root, so we also know that this expression here, even though it might have been hard to see at first, that expression there is also zero, and that means this y equals x e to the m1x is also going to be a solution for this equation here with repeated real roots. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Check out our video on complex conjugate roots for the characteristic polynomial. We'll see you then.